I'm making my coconut cake balls, which are so moist. To get started, I'm gonna combine my dry ingredients for the cake. In my bowl, I'm gonna add one cup of sugar, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, and half a cup of cake flour, which is gonna add a lighter texture to the cake. And if you don't have cake flour, you can just use more all-purpose flour. Totally fine. And three quarters of a teaspoon each of baking powder, baking soda, and kosher salt. So this cake is inspired by the birthday cake that my sister would always get growing up. We'd go to the same restaurant every year and they had what they called a luau cake because it was a Hawaiian restaurant. My dry ingredients are combined. Now I'll mix up the wet ingredients. In my big measuring cup here, I'm gonna add one cup of full fat coconut milk. And I want my coconut milk to be at room temperature. I don't want it to be cold because I'm gonna add a quarter cup of coconut oil and if it gets too cold, it'll firm back up. I'll add one large egg. Next, I'll grab my extracts and a lemon. I've got vanilla extract, which is gonna add more depth of flavor. I'll add one teaspoon of that. Half a teaspoon of coconut extract. And lastly, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of lemon juice, and that's gonna react with the baking soda in the dry mixture to make this cake extra fluffy. And I'll whisk this to combine. And now I'll whisk the wet ingredients right into the dry ingredients. So Nick's grandma Marie, who used to live in this house, was this all-star bowler in town. She would bowl multiple nights a week, so it's only natural that Nick built his own bowling alley so that he can practice and become as fierce of a bowler as she was. Batter's looking good. I have an eight inch round cake pan here that's been greased and lined on the bottom with parchment so that the cake doesn't stick. And now I'll bake this at 350 degrees for 28 minutes or until a toothpick stuck into the center comes out clean. Mm -hmm. There is no smell better than a freshly baked cake. I'm gonna let my cake cool now as I make my unbeatable, but you have to beat it, coconut frosting. This is my go-to American buttercream, but instead of using heavy cream in it, I'm gonna use coconut milk to amp up that coconut flavor. I'll start with half a cup of softened unsalted butter, and I'll add one cup of powdered sugar. I'll give it a pinch of salt, and then mix this until it's creamy. I'll start it off low so that the powdered sugar doesn't go flying everywhere. And once it's starting to get crumbly, I'm gonna increase the speed to medium so that I can get smooth. Okay. And now I'll add two tablespoons of coconut milk and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'll mix to combine. And that is looking fluffy and good. Now I'm gonna crumble the cake directly into my bowl. The best part about cake balls is that if you have a cake that sticks to the pan or maybe you've overbaked it and it's too dry, you can always mix it with frosting and turn it into a cake ball. You can't have a coconut cake without actual shredded coconut, so I'm gonna add half a cup of that right to the bowl as well. And I can eyeball this. At this point, it's no longer rocket science. I wanna mush it up so that the frosting helps bind all of this crumbled cake and the coconut together and it still looks kind of crumbly in my bowl, but I know that it's ready because if I pinch a piece off and I smash it together, it holds its shape. This looks like the perfect taste. Mm. Sweet, coconutty, buttery goodness. Now to shape these into balls, I'm gonna use a quarter cup ice cream scoop just so that they're all uniformly sized and then roll it in my hands just like this. This is going to be one dense bite of cake. But you need a heavy ball to knock out all the pins. Now I'm gonna turn my cake balls into bowling balls by giving them a white chocolate coating. So I have some white chocolate chips melting in my double boiler, and I've added some coconut oil, which thins it out and allow me to get a nice thin, even coating around the balls. This is melted and smooth. And now, because the prettiest balls of the bowling alley are always colorful, I'm gonna swirl in some blue. I'm gonna ladle out about a third of a cup of my chocolate. It doesn't have to be exact. 
And now I'm gonna color it with some oil-based food coloring. It's important that it's oil-based and that there not be any water in the food coloring because any bit of water that touches melted chocolate is gonna make it seize up, it's gonna ruin it. Okay, now I'll drizzle this chocolate right back into my bowl. And then I'll grab my balls. My cake balls have firmed up nicely in the freezer. I'll dunk a ball right into the chocolate and I'll turn it so that it gets coated in the chocolate on all sides. And look at that swirly action. It looks like a marbled bowling ball. And then before it firms up, I'm gonna add three mini chocolate chips so that they look like the finger holes in a real bowling ball. Now I'll keep on dunking until these balls are ready to roll. These look so sticking good. Mmm. 